Hey guys, Doug St. Denis with Rich to River Outdoors. I'm here with Mike Jamboretz, and this is part two of a winter blackmouth seminar that Mike provided at the Snow King Puget Sound Anglers Association. You know, Mike, you had some really good information in this seminar, and one of the things you talk about is hook points and how the salt water can affect those hook points. Well, one of the things to know about, like some of the Matsu hooks, if, if you buy a lure, it's got a Matsu type hook on it, they come out pretty sharp. You can kind of get away without sharpening them. Keep in mind that once you sharpen that, that hook, whether it's a nickel hook or a black hook like Matsu, once you sharpen that hook, it's going to be toast by the end of the day because that salt water is going to burn that tip once that, once that surface is gone. That's right. You're you're actually filing that protective coating that they put on that hook off in an effort to keep it sharp. You know, the lesson learned here, guys, is you want to have quality products when you're fishing the Puget Sound. You put a lot of time and effort out there. Make sure you're using quality hooks, swivels, and all of your tackle, as Mike talks about in this seminar, and be successful on the water. So you guys enjoy part two, and we'll see you at the end. That was a pretty good one. Okay, four and five inch plug. In the ocean, we fish seven inch plugs, or we fish five inch plugs. We don't hardly ever fish the fours, okay? Uh, in Puget Sound, you would never fish anything bigger than a five. Uh, it'd take a pretty aggressive blackmouth to take a six inch plug. But these, let's see, we got, there's some of the numbers. These are all the atomic numbers, okay? You know, I'm a pretty big fan of Silver Horde. I'm also a big fan of atomic, okay? These 602s and 3s, the only difference between a 602 and a 603 is the, the color of the face on it. The 602 has got a pink face. The uh, 603 has got a red face. The plug body is identical. Those bodies are identical. And there's the same versions. Excuse me, right there. That plug is over 20 years old. And I, I, I kind of keep my eye on it. <laughs> okay. There's that plug right there. Where's Walt? Yeah. He's still in the kitchen. There he is back there. That's Walt. It was a really cold day. Oh man, it was cold that day. I was really jealous of the guys up on the on top of the boat that were zipped up in the canopy driving the boat while I was on the deck freezing my butt off. It was cold. But that was a great fish. And one of the things that you're gonna find when you're fishing spoons, right now you probably you guys that are fishing cohos probably have seen this. You're catching a whole bunch of black mouth shakers, okay? Spoons will tend to catch almost everything, you know, and they'll, you know, a little tiny shaker will catch, will, will attack a big spoon. But they seem, when you fish the plugs, they, they tend to stay away from the plugs. So plugs is a good thing to, if you're catching a lot of shakers, it's not a really good thing. It's, it's a good thing to see because that knows, that tells us that, that, that it's healthy out in Puget Sound that the fish are reproducing. But a, a lot of those fish don't live, especially with the sidewash hook. They're going to come out their eyeball, you know. Uh, on the hooks, the question was, what style hook do I run? It's actually a, a 95 170 Mustad. Yeah. The question now is, is, do we scent the lures and the plugs? Yes. Okay. Why do we do it? Human scent. To mask human scent. I fished steelhead for a lot of years. Uh, and one of the things I learned fishing Tillamook Bay. I was down there for three days and I sucked. I couldn't catch any fish and the other two guys in the boat are catching fish. And I was washing my hands, I was doing everything. It just, sometimes you just gotta mask that human scent. Uh, putting WD-40, spraying your lures with WD-40 works really good. The fish like it. Uh, it's okay, it's okay stuff to do and it's simple. Just hold it over the side of the boat. You don't wanna, you don't wanna get it on the floor because it's slick, but uh, you can either smear a scent on it if you do smear scent on your lures, don't do it on your hoochies. It ruins them, okay? Especially the, you know, the smelly jelly type, you know, the really thick stuff. It, it'll coagulate on there and it, it'll pretty much ruin the hoochie. You can smear some on your plugs because once in a while when your plugs get really funky, take them into the house and, and throw them in the sink with some joy, dish soap, you know, wash them up. But, uh, do you ever scent your flasher? I don't. The question was, do I ever scent the flasher? No, I don't. Uh, if a jellyfish got on a flasher, get all the jellyfish off of there because the fish don't like the smell of a jellyfish. Uh, spray it with WD-40. That'll kill the smell of the jellyfish. Okay. 
Question again? Do you worry about scent from your hands? I do, yeah. When people are on, on our boat, and I, I don't have any pictures of flashers on here. I'm just showing the terminal gear at the end of the flasher mostly. But, and everything we're showing here will fish without a flasher, by the way. Spoons and, uh, and plugs don't need a flasher. Okay. The question was, do I ever worry about my hands? Yes, I do. Okay. If I was to pick up a lure, I'm going to pick it up by the fishing line. I'm not going to grab a plug with my hands like that. I'm, I'm not going to grab, you know. <laughs> you get yelled at on my boat if you grab a flasher and put your fingers on the face of the flasher. And then then out, comes the, out comes the WD-40. Yeah. It's, uh, you got to do it, you know. Fishing is one of the most uh, crazy things in the world. I mean, we all, we all do it. We all love it. And all we can do is be as scientific and as, as good as we are as can be and beyond that, it really is luck, okay? But if we do everything as right as you know how to do it, so human scent on the flasher, human scent on your hands, just do everything you can do to, to combat that. You know, get everything working for you. Okay, let's get past Walt. Okay, I've got to show you this plug because this thing's been a few years in the making. This is uh, brand new, okay? It was just released this week, okay? And this is going to be a black mouth plug. It's a four-incher. And the reason it's going to work is that black stripe on the back. There's a black stripe with purple. It's UV paint on the top, the bottom. And the white on the sides, this, this frost white UV stops basically at the eyeball line and is, is, is held back from the, the, the purple stripe on the plug. The reason for that is when you look down on that plug, if anybody's ever watched the plug in the water, which you should once in a while to make sure they're working right, they're wiggling like this, they're darting over here, and then they're darting over to there. But the whole time that they're darting, they're wiggling back and forth. Fish do see down. I don't care what anybody says. You ever hooked a fish and what's, what's his eyeballs looking at? They're looking down. Every time you got a fish laying on your deck, those eyeballs roll, okay? Fish can see down. When you're fishing blackmouth, they're down there looking for candlefish in the gravel, okay? 100%. Okay, if, if you're fishing a bait ball and it's a su suspended bait ball, yeah, it's better to have your gear running right at the top of the bait ball versus the bottom. But if you're fishing blackmouth, they're going to look down there and that, the top of that plug is going to look like uh, it's going to look like a needle fish wiggling in the water. Okay, these things are pretty exciting. We, we found these in the ocean. Here's the plug right here, but you can see that stripe on there. This paint, this starts with a glow body, okay? So it's actually the plastic that this plug is made out of will glow in the dark, okay? The UV paint starts at the bottom. It stops right about here. The idea is to have this profile of that, of that black and purple jump out. If you put this in the light, you'll see what I'm talking about. So we kept the paint away from the top of it so that it, more glow will come through, okay? We fished these in the ocean, not this particular one, but the five inch and seven inch version and they were killer uh, with a wider stripe. And out there, we took this five inch plug and we had three cut plug herrings on four. We had four downriggers in the water. Three of them got a cut plug herring on them. The herring is working perfectly. They, they bit that plug before they bit the herring. Okay, so I'm pretty excited about it. It worked really well with the, out there we're trying to Im imitate the anchovies, okay. When, you, when the fish looks at that from the top, here in Puget Sound, he's going to see a candlefish. When he looks at it from the side, he's going to see a herring. So, pretty cool deal. How fast do you control these? How fast the plug? These plugs, uh, this is a silver hoard body style, so you, you, it, it will go a little slower, but it's okay to go faster too. It just makes them dark quicker, and especially when you're trying to imitate a candlefish. A candlefish looks like a snake in the gravel. I mean, they're just, they're wiggling. Their bodies are just... So, this is going to be a good deal. And, uh, yeah, 40 feet be behind the release. If, you, if anybody didn't get one of these handouts, it talks about drop back distance on there. Uh, it shows drop back distance for every application, everything you might be fishing. Okay. You said you were running that with no flasher, right? No flasher. Okay. Yeah. Question was, do we run the plugs with a flasher? Never, okay. Yeah. Spoons you can run with a flasher. If you do, you're going to treat them as if it was a bait back there because the spoon has its own, its own action. And then the flasher, if you're going to use it to go whoosh, whoosh, and flash, flash. It makes sound in the water. It gets their attention. It gets them to look at your bait. So get your spoon. If you're going to put a spoon behind a flasher, put it back there quite a ways. You, know, you, can, you can put it back there six feet. It's not going to hurt a thing. 
and then use the flasher as the fish attractor, okay, get their attention. Okay, double coho killers, one point in one way, one point in the other. Pretty funky, huh? But it works. Yeah, it works. There was many, here's this one here, a double candlefish, okay. Probably over 20 years ago, we're, we're using the candlefish lure for blackmouth. And if I was a fish and I saw one candy bar, why wouldn't I have, want to have two candy bars in the same gulp, okay? And I did this as an experiment, and it caught fish. It, it, you don't have to. Uh, if you do, you're only allowed, keep in mind, you're only allowed two points out here, so you can't have the third point. So you can only put one, one hook per hoochie, okay? Keep that in mind. But it does work. It looks like they're chasing each other. They, they work pretty good behind a flasher. Two hooks on both hooks or one hook on each? One hook on each, okay? Because you can't have doubles, you know, otherwise you'd be illegal. You can only have two points. So. Right, yeah, two points. <clears throat> Do you use glow beads to drop the hook back farther than that? Say again, uh, what was it? Do you use like beads, glow beads and stuff to drop that hook back at the end of the skirt? Okay, the question was, how do I get the hook back since there's only one hook? With two hooks, you, you're going to probably have, you want your hook back by the tentacles for short biters. Okay, so the a great question, what, how do you get the hook back? You stack up beads, absolutely not. I'd never stack up beads because it makes the lure too heavy. Okay, I'm going to show a picture. I think it's coming right up. Okay, there you go. That's a drink mixing straw. Okay, those are the things that when you go buy your coffee in the morning, there's a whole container of them and you're allowed to have coffee quite a few hell. of them. Yep. Coffee okay. <laughs> so. Or you can use them for other things. Okay, but that's what that is, and that's the way I do it. I've got, a, I've got a, a small bead at the top to keep the, that thing from poking through the head of the, of the candlefish. And then the straw doesn't weigh anything, okay? So that's the whole reason to, to move, that's how I move the hook back. And the way I find out how long to cut that thing is just to lay the hook next to the deal and, and say, okay, it should be about, right about there, okay? Hook orientation, hook placement, here we go again. There's the straw, you can see it. Use that drink straw. Now, it doesn't weigh anything. The one thing, they're kind of fragile. After a couple of fish, they get ripped up, but, but they do their job, and, they, and that means they caught a fish, okay? Hook orientation and placement. When you tie your hooks, you guys have seen me before, you know how, what a stippler I am on hook placement. Tie one up, tie one down, okay? You're going to get more hookups with opposing hooks, okay? And you can do that just kind of when you get the first hook tied, kind of hold it in your hand with the hook pointing the other way and just let the line relax. If it, if it keeps wanting to kink up on you, let it relax again. Now, another thing to keep in mind on this, uh, the question that is I'm going to throw out at you guys, what do you do with that thing when you wrap it around a, a spool of, of foam? Okay, because you're going to turn that hook. I give it an extra turn. Wrap it up just like you're winding it up twice and then stick it into the foam. I'm talking about the foam leader dispenser guys that we all use, okay? All right, guys, that's the end of part two. Now, if you missed part one, make sure you go back and watch part one for some great information. You really need the information in part one and part two to move on to part three. Thanks for watching. Make sure you give Mike a call and visit his website at jambosportfishing.com.